I'm uh, Xiaobo Zhang, a pro distinguished professor of economics at uh, Peking University uh, in China. I'm also a senior research fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute based in DC, US. I think there are several dimensions. One is their uh, wage rate has been uh, increasing very fast. Before China has an export-oriented, labor-intensive uh, driven uh, economic model, China exports a lot of manufactured goods to other countries and import a lot of raw materials. But this is based on very cheap labor. After 30 years rapid economic growth, the surplus labor has been exhausted. So China must shift to other development models which are not totally rely on laborers. You see the transitions to different model, that's one. Uh, another one is that there's a, a lot of internal challenges. We, as I discussed today in the my presentation, there's a growth imbalance. Uh, Chinese are over uh, invest, save uh, a lot, but consume very little. This created a global imbalance. So that's another problem. So China also want to reverse its growth model to stimulate domestic, domestic consumption. It's, it'll be inevitable, yeah. so I think it will go probably quite fast. Yeah. It's hard to say because you need to understand people's consumption motive, why they consume, why they save. But right now, the people spend most of their money on housing uh, because housing is the most important status good in the marriage market. In China, for a man to get married, he must own a new apartment or build a new house in rural areas. So he put all the savings to the housing and then run out of money for consumption. So without changing that, it would be difficult to increase the consumption. But China is changing the white of the policy, losing the policy, probably will have the impact down the road. I think overall, I think the China uh, model will be roughly the same. The growth rate will slow down a little bit, but it will still grow much faster than many other countries. As China grows, it will import a lot of things from uh, Latin American countries. I, I don't think there's a big negative impact. Uh, on the one positive impact is China will continue to import a lot of agricultural products from Latin American countries, like soybean, corns, coffee, etc. Because as people get rich, they will consume more meat, dairy products. Also, they want more like coffee or some cash crops, uh, China, which China cannot produce enough for uh, all their own consumption. So China has to rely on external uh, market. So that's the trend. Because as China gets rich, as India gets rich, as African, uh, Africans get rich, definitely they will uh, eat more meat which in turn will require more feed grains, mainly corn and soybean. But this is a compared advantage of Latin American countries. I think that trend will continue. Hmm. I'm not sure, I haven't studied the service sector yet, uh, but I do see the potentials for tourism. If you count tourism as a service sector, um, you look at the China in the last uh, 10 years, uh, more people are traveling, uh, traveling outside China. Uh, the neighboring countries are benefiting for the increase in tourists, increase number of tourists. Uh, so if uh, Latin American countries open up the tourist market, I would see uh, a lot of Chinese tourists will come to Latin America to enjoy the beef, tangos, the beautiful weather, climate, clean air, water. Uh, they will love it. Uh, I think that's huge potentials. As people move in or uh, come to visit, I do believe they will see much more opportunities. Some may be related to uh, service sectors like the finance sectors. I just met a, a representative of SEBC here. SEBC is the uh, in, uh, industry and the commercial bank of China. It has a new building in the city and the, the, the representative told me that it has a large investment in uh, Argentina. So when people come over, they identify some opportunities, they will invest. 
So I would see maybe more Chinese investment in Argentina. Some of them must be related to the service sector. I think in general also the China's uh, rise will benefit uh, Africa. I think in, I would, I would say at least three dimensions. The so first one, same as Latin America, China will import more agricultural products, and uh, maybe more raw materials from Africa, which will beat up the prices, uh, this, uh, and then benefit uh, the, the countries. Uh, secondly, in China, because the reading widgets, the labor-intensive manufacturing sectors lost their competitiveness. Uh, so many factories are considering moving overseas. One of the destinations is some of the African countries, like uh, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania. So when these factories move to these uh, move to these countries, will generate a lot of employment uh, and stimulate the local economy. And thirdly, uh, China right now has a we call it excess production capacity problem, in particular in the infrastructure sector. Uh, China has built so many roads, uh, uh, railways, ports in the last 30 years. Now China has slowed down its investment domestically. These kind of uh, construction companies must find jobs elsewhere. So by going overseas, they can build roads and other infrastructure at a much competitive price. Uh, will help these countries, like African countries, to industrialize. Because without a good road, without electricity, without a port, it will be very hard for any country to uh, industrialize, to become the global community. Yeah. There's a domestic uh, rebalance. Uh, China has had a very large regional gap between the coastal areas and the inland areas. When China first opened up, most of the foreign investment flew to the coastal area, like Guangdong near Hong Kong, Fujian province near Taiwan, and also some northern province like Shandong, close to South Korea and Japan, because of the geographic advantage. But after some years of rapid growth, the land become very limited. Also labor become very expensive. So the some of the factories are moving to inland. Uh, so that will be help, uh, uh, helpful for the inland development. So we see there's a narrow, narrow gap between inland and the coast uh, in the last several years. So there's a rebalancing within China. I think we'll China will manage well. I don't see the big uh, likelihood of some recessions. Uh, the general trend is still there, and the leadership is very committed to reform, and the top leaders all had uh, uh, countryside experience. They were sent to the countryside to the Cultural Revolution, and then grew up uh, the party layers, the, the government layers to the top. They really know the situations uh, in China. They know what are the constraints. Uh, they have experience managing the economy to uh, maneuver the, 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 the power. Uh, so I think that's very important. So they all basically, uh, most important, they trust people. They, I think this new leadership, they trust people if we survive or uh, thrive, if giving them opportunities. So you see most of the reform agenda is to empower people, uh, give them opportunities. So I think when people are given opportunities, they will flourish. Uh, I think that's a fundamental driver of economic growth. I think so. I, I think we need to distinguish the agriculture sector and the other purely natural resource sector. I think the agriculture sector will still keep booming. Uh, for the natural resource sector, I'm not sure, because if China slow down the manufacturing sector and the construction sector, um, probably the demand for more raw material will decline and this may, may depress the uh, prices of raw materials, may have a negative impact on Latin American countries. And uh, on the other hand, China probably will invest more in Latin America. There are a lot of uh, direct investment. So if this environment can be invested in the infrastructure sector, like a port, building highways, there may be 
will be very good for stimulating Argentina's or uh, other countries' economic growth, like industry growth. I think it's mutual learning. Okay. Uh, I think because right now the world become more integrated, uh, we are all move together. Uh, if China comes to a recession, Latin America may come to recession as well. From this pact, I think we need a mutual learning. We know each other. Uh, uh, so I think the population flow and change between the two countries, uh, two, uh, China and the Latin American countries, are very important for Chinese. Because we are struggling with so many domestic challenges, we don't have time to think about, uh, to look at other countries. Uh, very few like Chinese scholars have chance to visit other countries. Uh, even for me, it's the first time to visit uh, Argentina. So it's an eye-opening experience. So by interacting with scholars, policymakers here, I learned tremendously. So I think it should be two-way learning. Yeah.